So I ended uh, yesterday uh, by talking about uh, the uh, Schwarzschild solution, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, so. And um, I had this picture of the maximally extended uh, Schwarzschild space time. And let me just draw the exterior. So here is the horizon at r equals 2m. Uh, here, is, here is the bifurcation sphere. This is uh, what I called region 1, which is the domain of outer communication. And, and here we have observers at future null infinity, so outgoing null curves will cross um, the future null infinity. Past outgoing null curves will cross past null infinity. Uh, and, uh, and so this region is the black hole region uh, because events in here are trapped in the sense that they, you cannot send information from here to an observer at infinity. And so you see from this picture uh, that, that uh, by just by continuity, that uh, if, you, if you shoot a light ray, uh, now I'm, the, so here we have two dimensions are suppressed. So each point in here uh, represents a, a sphere. So, but you see that uh, uh, by just by continuity that that uh, trajectories uh, some trajectories will fall into the black hole some some trajectories will fall into uh, will cross out through scry uh, the the null infinity and, but then by continuity you will have some trajectories some e some null trajectories which actually hang around and orbit the black hole and, and, um, and this is a very important feature in black hole space times. And it's also, it's quite robust in some sense. It doesn't require you to have uh, uh, a spherically symmetric or anything like that. Um, and it doesn't uh, actually, it, it, just, it just talks about uh, the fact that you have, you have to have, if you have this general picture, you have to have some some orbits, uh, some, some null orbits which are balanced in the sense that they neither fall into the black hole or nor, nor cross out through scry plus. And, and those are our, our photon orbits. <coughs> and uh, I also said that, that um, uh, if we define, if I take, if I take a null vector, uh, let's say, uh, so if I have a null vector k, and uh, which is uh, uh, passing through a surface S, uh, and if we let A of S be the area of that surface, uh, then uh, the sort of if we, if we then uh, do the variation in the direction of k of this area, uh, this, this will be uh, equal to 2 times the expansion of the... And this, this, this scalar theta here uh, is, is defined. This is the expansion. And this is defined uh, to be equal to um, a half divergence of k. Okay. So this is one of the one of the scalars that you can. Once you have chosen a null tetrad, this is one of the scalars that you can define from that null tetrad. And uh, and a calculation shows that you have uh, the following equation.
Okay. <coughs> so, uh, so the derivative of this, so the 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 this null expansion is is got by taking the first variation of the logarithm of the area or or of the area element, and if if we then do the variation again, uh, this equation holds, and the sigma is uh, this sigma squared is the quadratic shear, so it's defined like this. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, so this is the the shear, and this is simply the the quadratic norm or the trace-free part of the non-second fundamental form up to some some factor of a half. Uh, so, uh, since here we have a null vector, we have a surface. Uh, and and so there is a there is a null second fundamental form associated to this null vector, and this is simply the the trace free part of that squared. Okay, and and this this equation here is called the Rayshaduri equation. And and there's and there are two things which I haven't said here, which are required to get this form. So first of all, we require that uh, k should be geodesic. Actually, it's, it's enough to that this, this derivative of k along itself is proportional to k. Uh, so k geodesic, and also that It's irrotational. So, um, so we we can get this by by simply taking a surface and and shooting null geodesics off the surface in the direction of k, <coughs> and evolving k along the null geodesics, and then we can drag the surface along here under the geodesic flow. And this this uh, this equation then uh, will hold, and it describes the evolution of this uh, expansion scalar theta. And uh, so, if we have null energy condition of, or vacuum, so in vacuum this is of course zero. So, but if the null energy condition holds. This is uh, non-negative, and what you find then is that if if theta, uh, so if theta on S is less than some some constant less than zero, uh, then what you find from so this is this has a sign. Uh, here we have a simple ODE for for theta. This has a sign, and uh, and then you can show that. That theta goes to minus infinity in finite a fine time. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this means that that if I push the the area element along, then after some finite uh, parameter time, uh, this will collapse. And what this means is that uh, so the th the the theta really talks about the 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 uh, the evolution of of uh, a, a, a packet of of geodesics, so to speak, and it, so it it describes the evolution of the area element along these geodesics, and uh, when theta goes to minus infinity, this means that the, these null geodesics will develop a con a conjugate point. So if I do an infinitesimal variation of of these null geodesics, uh, so this is this is a null geodesic in the in the direction k. If I do a, a, a variation, then uh, something like that has to happen. So this this packet has to collapse at some point. And what that means is that 
if we so if we round off the corner in in Riemannian geometry uh, when you have a when you have geodesics which pass a conjugate point then they stop they are no longer minimizing because you can round off the corner like this you do a variation and you can round off the corner and um, and and then um, then uh, you can shorten the curve. But in, the, in Lorentzian geometry, uh, if these are null curves, then I can make this curve time-like. And, uh, and it's a, so, so here we can round off and, and make time-like. And this means that, <coughs> that these, uh, these curves uh, and I don't have time to go into that, but this means that this, these curves will leave the boundary of the time-like future of the surface. And there is, there is a lemma that says that this boundary uh, will always be, you can always reach, uh, if I look at the boundary of the time-like future, uh, I can always reach this, uh, this original surface along an algodesic which does not have any conjugate points. And this, this, uh, this fact here uh, shows that conjugate points have to develop. And this means that essentially the, 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 the boundary of the time-like future has to end at some, at some point. Okay? <clears throat> and and uh, so I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, so, uh, and uh, so I said yesterday that if, if we look, uh, if, if I look at, at uh, in, in, this, in, in this picture, we have region one and region two. Uh, so, so we have the, the domain of outer communication. We have the black hole region <coughs> in here. Um, if, uh, in here, if I take an outgoing future directed null ray, which is essentially dv right up to some scaling this is the this is the uh, the uh, derivative the the coordinate derivative along the uh, the cross scale coordinate which i called v so this renormalized coordinates that extend throughout the the uh, the extended Schwarzschild. so so if i take if i choose this then, then we have that, uh, that theta is positive in region 1 and theta is negative uh, in region 2. And, and uh, actually theta is equal to 0 on the horizon. So here we have, in here I have theta negative and, and on the horizon here, I have theta equal to zero. So uh, if we call, uh, and so we can, uh, we can then think about such surfaces just sitting in a Cauchy surface, because we can take some, some Cauchy surface that goes through the space-time and look at, uh, at uh, surfaces in that, two surfaces in, in this, Cauchy surface uh, sigma here. So here is sigma. Here is the surface, and we have the the time-like normal, uh, and we have some uh, some space-like normal like that, <coughs> and uh, and uh, we have we can then take we can then form a null vector from those like this. So I just, I just take the sum of these, that if I decide that this eta here, this space-like normal within the, 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 the three surface sigma is the outgoing direction, this is the future normal direction, then this will be an outgoing null vector. And, uh, and so I can, uh, I can then calculate Theta in for that uh, for that uh, that null vector k in terms of 
the data on on sigma. So sig sigma will have some induced uh, metric and induced second fundamental form. And uh, with this normalization I had before, this will be, now I take the trace within S of K. So I take this K, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using K now for two different, uh, cleverly I chose the same letter for two different reasons. So, so th this, this K here is, is the, um, is the null vector, this k is the second fundamental form, so I'm sorry about that. And so here, this means that I take h i j, well, so, so it's, it's trace along s of the, the k, and this is the, this is the, the second fundamental form, not, not, not the, uh, the null vector. Uh, and then I take plus, uh, and let me call it h, and this h here is the is the second fun. This is the mean curvature. So this is the uh, mean curvature of s in sigma. So I can get that by by simply taking uh, this is simply uh, nabla. So if I take the sigma sigma covariant derivative like that. So I, this, is, this is the, the trace, the, this is the divergence of eta within sigma. Here is the trace of the second fundamental form restricted to, to S, the 3 plus 1 second fundamental form restricted to S, and this will give me the same scalar theta. And uh, so we can call S is then, uh, so if, if theta is less than zero, we say that, uh, that S is outer trapped equal to zero it's marginally outer trapped And of course, greater than zero, it's it's untrapped. Uh, and and uh, so there is this acronym, acronym, MOTS, marginally outer trapped surface. And these are analogs. These are analogs of minimal surfaces in Riemannian geometry. Uh, and in fact, I mean, they're, they're minimal in, 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 a, in a precise sense in, in Lorentzian geometry as well, because uh, if I do a variation of the area element along uh, the outgoing null vector, that, var that variation is zero. <coughs> um, so in, in the Schwarzschild space time, we have the, the horizon is foliated by such marginally outer trapped surfaces. <coughs> and uh, a, a theorem which is basically follows from this observation that we have here. Uh, is the following. So this is a singularity theorem. So, uh, So we assume that the null energy condition uh, holds in the space-time, and and so let uh, and we assume the following: that that uh, the exterior of sigma is non-compact. 
So this will typically be the case in, in this situation. So if we, if we look at one of these uh, outer trapped surfaces over here, the I can de define this to be the exterior of, of, e of S in sigma, and that will certainly be non-compact. Uh, because the, there is an N that goes out like Euclidean space. Uh, so we assume the exterior is, is non-compact and, and uh, theta on S is less than zero. So it's outer trapped. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes. Thanks. So if we have these two conditions, then, then M, the space-time uh, is causally So, so this means that, um, so as I explained, because of this, this, these, uh, these facts about, uh, about the, f the boundary of the future, you can show that, that, uh, that no, there has to be some null curve uh, that can only extend for a finite parameter time. So this, this uh, says very little about the, the nature of this so, so this is this is usually referred to as a singularity, but of course that word doesn't really exp express what we can conclude from this theorem because we cannot conclude anything about the behavior of curvature or uh, or anything like that. In the Schwarzschild case, we know that curvature actually blows up here, which so here is. This is r equal to zero, and and curvature blows up like uh, like one over r cubed or something like that, uh, and so that's a strong curvature singularity, and anyone who tries to pass such a singularity will be will be crushed by tidal forces. But uh, from from such a such a weak theorem, nothing like that can be concluded. Uh, but what what uh, this this motivates using uh, uh, these marginally outer trapped surfaces to represent uh, the apparent horizon. So if if we have a dynamical uh, black hole, um, uh, which to see an example of of, of that, we can look at the Vaidya space time. So this is mm. uh, so this is Vaidya and uh, and F here is one minus two M of R over R. And uh, so if I take, if I set this m of r to be a constant, <coughs> this is just, uh, then, then we, so you see here that there is no dv squared. So v is a null coordinate. And this is then, if I set m to be constant, this is just uh, uh, what's known as, uh, so this is, this is then a coordinate in Schwarzschild which uh, crosses a coordinate system which crosses over the future part of the horizon. And so this is, this is then uh, for, if we take m equals m of r equals constant, this is, this is ingoing. Uh, Eddington Finkelstein.
So it's, it's Schwarzschild in So, so, so with m equals constant, this is a particular case of Schwarzschild simply. But with m non-constant, so I can, I can take this, this m to be some function like this. So, so here, is, here is this parameter v. So here is v1, v2. And so I, I let m go be constant and then increase and then be constant again. So here is some, some m1 and, uh, and m2. And uh, what you find then in that uh, resulting space time, so for, for some parameter value, for if, we, if this, we, d d this, we say this is, this is v1 and this is v2, then uh, in here we have a, we have some infalling null dust. So if you calculate the stress energy tensor, it's it's uh, it it's just uh, a, a null vector tensored with tensored with itself. So this is this is null dust uh, in the region where where m is non-constant, and we have the null dust falling in across uh, the the horizon, and uh, so the 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 picture that you end up with is something like this. So here is the, here is the horizon. Here is v1, v2. And uh, now if I look at, at marginally trapped surfaces in this space time, then uh, they, they will behave like this. So here we have this, here we have these, these are, uh, so each point here represents a, a knot. So each, uh, if, I, if I look at circularly symmetric Cauchy surfaces that go across like this, then here will be a, a knot. And as I move forward in time uh, and, and get into this region where, where the null dust is falling in, the, these uh, these uh, marginally outer trap surfaces will be mo moving out, and eventually, once the null dust has stopped falling in, they will uh, here. So in this here in this region, here we have Schwarzschild, and and down here we also have Schwarzschild. So the uh, so the space time deviates uh, from Schwarzschild in this region. And uh, the, the, the infalling uh, matter or stress energy causes the, this, uh, this surface, the three surface swept out in the space time by the marginally outer trapped surfaces to move out to the event, and eventually it ends up at the event horizon. Okay? And, and uh, so it, 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 this, so this, this, uh, the, the tube uh, swept out by, by the, these moths. This, this represents, in some sense, the apparent horizon. Okay. Uh, and, and so this is, this is a bit uh, heuristic because uh, uh, the location of these surfaces is not a space-time quantity. It's something that depends on the, on the choice of Cauchy slicing. Uh, but uh, this, is, this is sort of, this strengthens this idea that, that, uh, that these moths are actually uh, in a quasi-local sense, the location, they tell you about the location of the, of the, of the black hole. And so if you, if you have a Cauchy surface that, that contains uh, 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 a marginally outer trapped surface, you could think of the interior of that marginally outer trapped surface as, uh, as uh, the, the black hole region. 
and, and you can expect that outside of that marginally outer trap surface, outside of that apparent horizon, uh, there will, the, you, there, that's where you will find the event horizon. But you cannot know the event horizon until you have actually constructed the whole space-time. Uh, so, uh, so in that sense, it's teleological. So you have to have complete knowledge uh, of, of the space-time in order to, to know the location of the event horizon. So from, from the point of view of an evolution problem, this notion of event horizon is not really that useful because you cannot, you cannot access it purely from looking at Cauchy data. But you can, you can access marginally out of trapped surfaces uh, uh, yeah, purely from Cauchy data. And uh, so the, the, there's, there's, there are some results uh, which have been proven um, over the last few years, uh, or the, the last several years, uh, and uh, and so the the picture that that emerges is that uh, so so uh, some uh, some facts about mods So first of all. Um, uh, What you can show is, is the following. So here, here, is, here is the foliation by Cauchy surfaces. Here we have a MOTS. And, and we, let's assume this is the outermost. So you can show that once, uh, if, you, if you have a Cauchy surface that co does contain a marginally outer trap surface, there is, uh, there is a largest one. There is one that, con that uh, there is the largest one that surrounds that, the one you have found. And, uh, and that has certain stability properties. So in particular, what you, can f what you can show is the following, that if we have a Cauchy foliation, then every later uh, surface in this Cauchy foliation will contain a MOTS. They can jump. So, so, so you can have this picture. But they will always jump out in this sense. And you can show that uh, for in, in, a, in a generic sense, uh, this surface is always space-like if you assume the null energy condition. So in, in some sense, uh, if, if you want to understand a, a dynamical black hole, uh, what you want to do is you want to take a, a, a marginally, a, a Cauchy surface containing a marginally outer trapped surface. Forget about the interior of that marginally outer trapped surface and simply solve the Cauchy problem on the exterior. And, and then uh, event, eventually what can happen in strong field situations is that uh, this, this apparent horizon will jump. And, uh, and you will then have to sort of re restart your pro procedure. And this is precisely, this corresponds precisely to the picture that, that one sees doing uh, numerical evolutions. And so, so if in, in numerical relativity, uh, people have developed horizon trackers, which, which l calculate the location of these marginally outer trapped surfaces in, in a given Cauchy surface. And then they find that, uh, that, uh, that from time to time, if, if you have, for example, two, two black holes which are colliding, if when they get close enough together, there will be a, 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 a marginally trapped surface uh, forming that surrounds the two. And this is, this is something that then co corresponds to theorems uh, that one can prove about such marginally outer trapped surfaces. Yeah. <coughs> The, 
that's a good question. And I guess the, the answer is that one doesn't really know. And people have tried to look at this in numerical simulations. And, and certainly in, in many situations, what does happen is that, is that you, have, you have some, um, you, you can have some, some, some situation like that. That, that this, this actually, uh, you can actually locate a, 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 a space-time track that connects these, uh, the, these two surfaces. Uh, but uh, I, I have no, uh, I mean, I, I don't know any way to, to prove things like that. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's a curious fact, but it's, it's a hopeless thing to really think about. If you look at marginal outer trap surfaces, you, you have stability properties. So the, the second variation operator has an, a principal eigenvalue, which is non-negative. So this, this is a fundamental fact that follows from this outermost property. <laughs> And this is simply this simply mean, this simply comes from the fact that you cannot perturb such a surface outwards and make it uh, 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 trapped because if you find a trapped surface outside, we have a theorem that says that you can then find a marginally outer trapped surface that surrounds this. So so this is the this is the very heuristic picture, but uh, I think this is a, an important piece. In, in, the, in developing some, some understanding of, of dynamical black holes in general. Uh, and uh, and I, I want to mention two, two other things which are related to this, which, uh, which also somehow add to this, uh, add to this picture. And this is, uh, these are results about formation of black holes. So, so the first uh, you could say is is formation. So that's the, so from from concentration of matter. So if we have so the the theorem is like this. So we have some. Some region, and now we have, we have, uh, so we have some 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 row which is, um, I guess it's T A B T A T B. So the time-like time-like uh, component of the stress energy. Um, I may be forgetting a factor of a half or something, uh, and and we have mu i which is. T I A T A. So this is the space-like, time-like component of the stress energy. And suppose that in this region here, uh, we have uh, so if if this holds, if 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 this uh, if if the dominant energy condition is sort of the dominant energy condition would be uh, violated when rho is less than modulus of mu. So, so if, if, if there is lots of matter in some sense in a large region, So, so if that region is large enough, then in there we can find a marginally trapped surface. Uh, and so that signals uh, uh, the existence of a black hole. Uh, so if we have lots of matter in a large region, there will be a black hole. Uh, or if we have very much matter in a, in a small region, there will also be a black hole. So this. Uh, so that's 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 one one uh, result. So uh, and the proof uses this machinery of of Jang's equation, which is also uh, the thing that that makes it possible to prove things about uh, marginally outer trap surfaces. But I, I won't uh, I won't go into that. Uh, 
the other result is, uh, okay, let me, This is from concentration of radiation, and uh, so the picture is is some something like this. So here, uh, so here is this is the past null infinity, and we have some some pulse of radiation that's being sent in from past null infinity. Uh, so which is, this can still be compatible with asymptotic flatness in, in the usual sense. But then one can show that if this uh, pulse is concentrated enough, then somewhere in there will form a, a trapped surface. And this is, this is uh, work of Christodoulou. And so this is this is really a space-time result, whereas uh, the the Schönyau result is purely talks about the geometry of a Cauchy surface. So those are uh, extremely different types of results. And uh, and uh, this this uh, I think was uh, 800 pages or something like that when it first came out, but then has been uh, simplified by. Kleinemann and, and collaborators. Uh, okay, so so I think so so based so let me just to summarize this this discussion, let me let me just draw sort of the the grand picture of a dynamical black hole. Uh, That we that one would like to understand, so to speak. So here is. Uh, so here here is the event horizon, which we don't really have access to. Here is here is a marginally outer trap tube, which. As as the inf amount of infalling radiation decreases, it will approach uh, the event horizon. Uh, there will be some some trapped null geodesics, uh, and if we have a rotating black hole, there will be an ergo region, which I will come to. Uh, and uh, so radiation and and gravitational energy and so on will be lost from the system through through future null infinity and and through through the horizon uh, so you expect that asymptotically uh, the geometry will approach uh, a, a stationary black hole okay so so that's the picture and and so to understand that it's because of the the facts about uh, the 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 apparent horizon you can then uh, restrict yourself to evolving to looking at the cauchy evolution of the space time in the exterior of whatever marginally outer trapped surface that you have in in the in in your cauchy surface and if you take some data that's close to schwarzschild or kerr you will find uh you can find such Cauchy surfaces. Okay, so this this is the this is the picture, and this is this is the setting where uh, the the problems about black hole stability uh, can be formulated precisely. Okay. <clears throat> 
Okay. Uh, <coughs> so Okay, so, so I'll say uh, uh, a couple of things more about Schwarzschild uh, uh, before uh, going to Kerr. And, and what I wanted to say So uh, a, a very important fact that also should be quite robust is that if you have uh, radiation that's sent out near the, the, uh, the horizon, uh, it will reach infinity only uh, after being redshifted by a large amount. And as you uh, asymptotically approach the horizon, this, this, should, this effect should be stronger and stronger. And, and certainly, this is the case in, in Schwarzschild. <coughs> so if we have, if this is the, 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 the sta static uh, killing field, uh, then what you have is that this uh, contraction, this is uh, so so here I said k a is is just the uh, the velocity of of the null geodesic. So because of the fact that this is a killing field and this is a, uh, a geodesic, the, the velocity vector of a geodesic, this quantity is conserved. Uh, and So if we have some, uh, if, if this observer is sending out radiation, this is the frequency of, 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 of that radiation. And this, this is simply the, the proper time uh, factor uh, that this is rescaled by. And uh, in, in Schwarzschild, we have the, this, this quantity here is just F 1 half, which is 1 minus 2 M over r to the one half. So if we have, uh, if we look at two observers, so here is the horizon, uh, here is observer one, here is observer two, and observer one sends out some, some radiation along, uh, along an algeodesic like that then uh, you can calculate this frequency initially and at the final point, and you can calculate their uh, ratio. And what you find is that, so here we have frequency one, frequency two, and what you find is that uh, the frequency uh, Something like that, and and so if r one, then so this this horizon here is is r equals two m. So if I push uh, the location of observer one closer to the black hole, this ratio will will blow up. Um, And so what that means is that, is that uh, compared to the initial frequency, the observed frequency far away from the black hole uh, will be 
become arbitrarily small as I, as I push the observer closer to the black hole. And, and this is, uh, this is a, a, a fact that's also reflected by uh, some, uh, somehow the, the, ne the fact that you, can, you don't have any orbiting null geodesics very close to the black hole. And, and uh, in extreme Kerr, at least in, in, in if, if we look in coordinates, so, ex so extreme Kerr means, uh, which I will talk about soon, uh, means that you have the rotation speed is um, uh, the, the angular momentum per unit mass is equal to the mass of the black hole. And there, the, 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 uh, the, uh, this effect, uh, in some sense, uh, what I want to say, yeah. So, so the, at least in a core, in, in if you in a, in a coordinate picture, it seems as though uh, the rotating null geodesics become arbitrarily close to the horizon. This is not really true geometrically, but uh, that's 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 one aspect of of this of this phenomenon that there is a separation between uh, these rotating null geodesics and, and, uh, and uh, the horizon. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, So I just I, I mentioned several times uh, photon orbits, and so let's simply analyze those in in Schwarzschild. So all of this is somehow quite well known, but uh, I will I still want to want to go over this. So so now we're in Schwarzschild. and uh, let's say. Uh, gamma is an null geodesic. Uh, so we have <clears throat> and uh, since we're in Schwarzschild, we can we can assume uh, without loss of generality that that along uh, this uh, this null geodesic the 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 coordinate theta. Now, now theta is, is the coordinate, so we can assume that theta differentiated along the uh, the null geodesic is 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 uh, zero, and so we can set this to be equal to th to pi halves. So we look only at at geodesics which are equatorial, right? So they're in the in the equatorial plane. In, in Schwarzschild. Uh, and so that means that we have the, uh, the following uh, relation. So, so this is the, if I just plug this in, I use this relation and calculate uh, what I get is Okay, so, so these dots here mean the, the time derivative, the, the affine parameter time derivative along the geodesic of these coordinates, t, r, and phi. The theta was already uh, canceled like that. And, and since we're on the equator, the factor in front of the phi is, is one, right? And uh, then, um, so now we have in, in Schwarzschild, now the, the, the relevant vector fields are psi a, which is dt a. And, uh, and uh, I can set um, this is, so minus that quantity is the energy of the null geodesic. And this is a conserved quantity. Uh, and eta is, is the axial killing field. And if 
I take eta and contract with the velocity vector, I get the azimuthal angular momentum. So let me just call it L. Uh, and you can calculate that this is f p dot squared, and this is uh, r squared phi dot. So you can find those expressions here. And uh, now uh, you can rewrite this, this relation in the following way. So we can write it as r dot squared plus v equals e squared. And, uh, and this v is simply f over r squared l squared. Okay. Um, and so what you have here is a Hamiltonian system with a potential v. And e here, which is conserved, is the energy level of the particle. And, uh, and if you look at the shape of this, this potential V, uh, it looks like this. So here is 3M, here is, uh, here is 2M, and uh, so F goes to zero at, at 2M, and uh, what you find is that this has a maximum and dies off as R goes to infinity. And so, uh, and the condition for having a, 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 a stationary point for this Hamiltonian system is that V has a critical point. It, the only critical point here is at R equals 3M. And since it's a maximum of the potential, what you find here is that you have unstable uh, orbits. So, uh, so the conclusion is that is that these in in, in the Schwarzschild case, uh, uh, these these uh, orbiting uh, photons or null geodesics are located at at r equals three m. So here is here is the black hole, and and it's surrounded at r. So here is r equals two m. It's surrounded at coordinate location r equals 3m by a sphere where we have uh, orbiting null geodesics. Okay. They're they're unstable. Right. Exactly. So so this is the only critical point of of this. Um, uh, of, of the, I mean, if you, you, you take this expression, calculate its derivative, what you find is that there is a factor 3m minus r. And, and so the only critical point for this v is at r equals 3m. And, and that's the only possible location for orbiting uh, null geodesics in Schwarzschild. If we look at massive uh, orbits, the, it's, it's more complicated. So if, but then, then we have a, right, a non-zero right-hand side, which corresponds to this quantity, which is also conserved. Right? This, this quantity, which I have set to zero, would be the mass. And, but so in, in Schwarzschild, you have this, this very important fact that, that, um, that there is a photon sphere. And this is the location. Uh, this is the only location in the space-time where you have photons which orbit for an, uh, for an arbitrarily long time around uh, the, the black hole. And, and, uh, and what you see from this picture is that uh, this, this is unstable. So if I take such an orbit and, and perturb it uh, slightly, uh, the photon will either fall into the black hole or go out to infinity. And so in this picture, it's, it's not a, 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 a sort of an open space-time region that is filled up with these orbiting algebra. It's, it's simply uh, a, a three-surface 
But in general, uh, the region that will be filled up by orbiting null geodesics will be an open space-time region. This is the fact in Kerr, for example. Okay. <coughs> okay, and um, so let me end, well, okay, so, so let me s uh, end, and we'll take a break, but let me end by just writing one, one fact That is, it's it's nice to to look at in in Schwarzschild because it's also the same uh, the same fact obtains in 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 Kerr. Uh, so what we have is the following. So if I can I can take this I can take this uh, relation and and write it in the following way. <coughs> uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, and uh, this this script R is uh, Uh, and now, on the other hand, the wave equation if I write it in the following way uh, uh, so I take. The, this is the covariant wave equation. I just multiply by r squared. And what you find then th is that this is equal to the r. Um, and then in here we have r squared f, for some reason, the r, uh, plus, and here is the script r over r squared f. But now, now so here we have this. This is the potential for the orbit for the radial motion of null geodesics in Schwarzschild expressed in terms of these conserved quantities for null geodesics. Here we have the same expression appearing in the wave equation, but now we have to write that as, as a function of r dt and the angular Laplacian. So this is the angular Laplacian. So simply, simply the the, the Laplacian on the on the round two sphere, okay, uh, and and we 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 get this by uh, using uh, a correspondence like this that E corresponds to I dt and L squared corresponds to minus angular Laplacian. So if we do a, a, a spherical harmonic decomposition, this L squared is going to be replaced by little l times l plus 1, right? So, so this, this corresponds to l times l plus 1, uh, where this l is the parameter of the, the index of the spherical harmonic. Okay? So, so this is a curious, well, I mean, th this is just a calculation, but uh, the fact is that this relation between the potential for radial motion of null geodesics and uh, the, essentially the business part of the wave equation, this relationship holds also in Kerr, which I think is somehow uh, curious and interesting. <coughs> and, and so we'll come back to that. And so I think this is a good time to take a break. Okay. So then. So I've been uh, I've been sort of putting off this uh, this discussion, but now uh, now is the time to introduce the Kerr metric, which is somehow the the main object. Even though uh, many aspects are seen in Schwarzschild, there are uh, many extremely important new features that come up. 
and so we have to introduce this uh, some somewhat more complicated uh, metric. So we have coordinates t r theta phi, and this is the this what I'm going to write down is the Bohr Lindquist. Form, which is, this is very similar to the Schwarzschild coordinates, but not the, the best choice of coordinate for many purposes. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it has, uh, on the other hand, uh, many si simplifying features. So, uh, let's see here, yes, okay, uh, and so sigma is r squared plus a squared cosine squared theta, and delta, which is an unfortunate notation, is r, r squared minus 2m r plus, plus a squared, uh, and uh, so this, this, this is the anal this is analogous to uh, in Schwarzschild to r squared times f. Right, so this is a quantity. So f goes to zero on the horizon. This goes to zero on the horizon, and and we designate r plus minus is plus or minus m squared minus r a squared. Uh, R plus is the location of, of the horizon. And you see that this is a, a similar to the structure case. This is the uh, uh, coordinate singularity for this form of the line element. And, and this, this is simply a coordinate singularity as in the structure case. Um, and, uh, and there are other more clever choices of coordinate systems. For example, uh, v some version of Kruskal coordinates you can invent. There are versions of the Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates which cross over the future part of the horizon and so on. Uh, but uh, I won't write down more, more versions of the coordinate uh, system. The space-time li line element, uh, so let me just write minus Uh, so, so like this, the, squ the square root of the determinant of, of the metric in this coordinate is just sigma sine theta. So uh, that's quite simple. And we have two killing vector fields, dt, so stationary, and d phi, which is axial. Uh, and uh, the norm of d by dt goes to minus 1 as we let r go to infinity. So uh, this is the stationary uh, killing field. The m, the parameter m is the ADM mass. And, and a times m is the angular momentum. And those can be recovered from this form of the line element by those expressions that I wrote down earlier uh, for, the, um, for the mass and angular momentum in terms of uh, the Cauchy data. Okay. <coughs> and and, so, and uh, for modulus of A less than or equal to M, this is a black hole space time. 
uh, and and a, a equal to m is called extreme Kerr. And this this has several features that I don't want to get into. So so we're always going to look at uh, at modulus a less than m. And in fact, uh, that's the only uh, that's the situation that where one can really say something. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. And and so uh, and as I explained, so so from from the fact that those two are killing fields, uh, this means that we have a conserved quantity E. Uh, Uh, for for particles, so this is simply this e, as I said, is simply the minus dt dotted into the velocity vector of, of, of the uh, of, of the curve, and the phi is a killing field. Uh, this means that we have the azimuthal angular momentum. And these are these are our conserved quantities. For geodesics. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Uh, um, yeah, I should say, uh, so, so there's another conserved quantity. Which is called the Carter constant. And uh, so one, one form of that is, uh, is the following. Uh, So okay, so so well, so I, I, so here is uh, this is the L Z squared, and this is the E squared, and this is the momentum associated to the motion in the in the theta direction, uh, which is not this this is not separately conserved. Those two are conserved, uh, and and the whole expression is conserved, but this. P separately is not concerned, right? And 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 that so this is a, a very remarkable thing, but um, uh, no. So now here we have in addition, in addition to the length of the the geodesic uh, of the geodesic uh, vector, which is g a b gamma dot a gamma dot b. Uh, this is also concerned. This is the mass of the particle. Uh, so so now we have four conserved quantities uh, so so I should say so this Q is conserved Uh, along uh, so this so this form uh, along null geodesics uh, and so there's a, a, a slightly more complicated version which is uh, conserved along uh, geodesics uh, which involves the mass right uh, and but what I should say is that so now if we look at if we look at null geodesics we have these 
four, we have the three conserved quantities plus the mass. Okay? So I, I wrote this simpler form because that's the one I, I really care about. Uh, the Louisville theorem says that uh, the geodesic equation is integrable by quadratures. And so we can, uh, we can actually solve the geodesic equation up to integration, so to speak. And so this means that, that one can analyze uh, uh, the, the, the geometry of the space-time quite completely. And, uh, and in particular, there is, again, for Kerr, there is a, a maximally extended curve, which I'm not going to draw. Uh, in, but uh, what we're interested in is, is, again, the domain of outer communication. So here is time-like infinity, uh, sorry, space-like infinity, time-like infinity, the horizon, which is located at r equals r plus horizon, e located at r equals r plus here is a bifurcation sphere uh, similar to the, to the Schwarzschild case. And the singularity in this case, so this is a curvature singularity, but it, it's not uh, located at r equal to 0. It's located at r equal to 0 and, and theta equals pi halves. Because the, the, the quantity that uh, that uh, appears in the curvature is an expression that, that, uh, that vanishes when this expression, when the sigma vanishes. Okay. So, so there is a curvature singularity, but it's, it's, it's ring-shaped, so to speak, because you have a singularity only along the equator in this, uh, in this sphere. Okay, uh, and uh, you can introduce a, a null tetrad, uh, so which I'm, I'm just going to write it down once, so you have seen it. And so I'm, I'm just writing the, the components of this. So th these, these are vectors, and these are the components of the vectors in the TR theta phi coordinate system. So, and, and then there is another vector m bar, which is simply the complex conjugate of that. So, so here we have two real vectors and two complex vectors. And these vectors are null vectors. Uh, I mean, all of these four vectors are null vectors. And, uh, and So the picture is that, uh, so, so here we have L and N, and M and M bar are essentially, they're per perpendicular to these two real null vectors. But uh, uh, an important feature is that, uh, so if we go to Schwarzschild, these M and M bar would span precisely the coordinate spheres located at, at constant T and R. But here, uh, the, the surface perpendicular to these N and L 
do not, uh, the, the two planes perpendicular to the L and N do not sweep out a two surface. So this is not an integrable distribution. And this is related to the fact that these are, are not irrotational. So uh, they, they generate geodesics, but they're, they're not irrotational. Uh, and and we, can, uh, we can write the metric in this, since I have this uh, minus plus 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 uh, signature, I can write it like this. Uh, so G A B like that. Okay. Uh, and uh, so uh, now uh, these these L and N these real number vectors are so you see for, uh, well so you see uh, from. Let me just so those are all now. Uh, they have mutually L and N has inner product uh, minus one with this choice of signature M and M bar have uh, inner product uh, one, as you see from here, and L and N are principal null vectors. And in fact, repeated so I'll come back to this uh, but so uh, so the expression this is a, a somewhat complicated uh, expression, but let me just write it down so uh, uh, So, so C is the vial tensor, and this, this is the condition for, uh, for K being a principal null vector. Uh, and we'll, this looks terrible, actually. And I mean, it's much easier to understand in terms of spinners, and which we'll come to. Uh, but uh, the, the, uh, the Goldberg-Sachs theorem implies that any repeated principal null vector is uh, geodesic and shear free. So this L and N are so this means that uh, this means that several components of curvature, so if we take the, the vial tensor, express it in such a tetrad which is which is a principal null tetrad. Uh, several components of curvature vanish, and uh, and in fact there is essentially one complex scalar that remains. And and uh, spaces with two repeated uh, null vectors, this this uh, those are called Petrov type D. Or two two. And, and so this, this is the, the fact that I alluded to uh, in the beginning, um, uh, that, that Kerr has this algebraically special nature. And the, the, the vacuum spaces that have that form, uh, contain, that family contains the Kerr space, the Kerr nut, and also another metric called the C metric. Uh, so, so those are all classified. Uh, and, and basically, the only good metric in that family is the Kerr metric. Uh, the, the nut metric has uh, a null uh, infinity, which is not 
which uh, is very different from the one in Minkowski space, uh, the C metric has uh, essentially uh, uh, some kind of conical singularity and uh, the, the null infinity is not complete. So the only good metric in this family is the Kerr metric, or at least from our point of view is, uh, is the Kerr metric. And, and, uh, and, it, and the Kerr metric can be characterized by, uh, by being Petrov type D asymptotically flat and mass greater than zero. So uh, mass greater than zero excludes these uh, symmetrics, which are boost rotation symmetric. So, so this is one uh, important aspect that understanding uh, the nature of this Petrov classification allows us to characterize uh, the Kerr metric. Uh, well, I should, I should, should say here, uh, should be, of course, vacuum. So I'll, uh, okay, so uh, let's see here. Uh, so, since I have the, the, the null tetrad on the board, let me write down uh, the quarter tensor. So this is KAB. This tensor has the property that, so this, this generalizes the killing uh, uh, equation. So uh, for, for a vector, uh, the killing equation is simply that the, the symmetrized covariant derivative is zero. Um, here we have a two tensor which is symmetric and the symmetrized covariant derivative again vanishes. So this is a killing tensor. And uh, uh, if, you, if you write down uh, this object, this, this operator commutes with the, the Dahl inversion. Okay. So that's a, that's a symmetry operator. And uh, this is one important aspect of, of so, the, the, so uh, the, the other important aspect is that for null geodesics, so if we have a gamma is a null geodesic, then uh, I can take this KAB gamma dot A gamma dot B, uh, uh, this is equal to uh, uh, the Q that I wrote down plus LZ squared. Okay. And uh, if you look in, if you look in, in, uh, in, uh, so if we take this Q plus LZ squared and restrict to, to A equal to zero, this is simply the total angular momentum squared. So, so the, the Carter constant uh, is, the fact that that is conserved is somehow very closely related to the fact in, in Schwarzschild 
that the total angular momentum square, squared is conserved. But due to the rotation, uh, the azimuthal angular momentum, which is associated to the axial symmetry and the Carter constant, uh, become separated, so to speak. OK, so, so uh, that's, those are several uh, facts about uh, the, 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 uh, the curve geometry. And so as I said, so, so we have a, a horizon at, at r equals r plus. <coughs> and uh, if we look at the horizon from the side, so to speak, this is uh, ruled by, uh, by null geodesics. And, uh, and uh, the, those are aligned with a null killing vector field. Um, so dt plus omega h d phi at r equals r plus. This is a null killing vector field. And, uh, and the omega h here is a over r plus squared plus a squared. This is the rotation speed of the black hole. Another, uh, another important fact uh, is that, so this is in general for, so if we take a, a null ge generator, of a killing horizon, uh, so well, so one which is ruled by null geodesics uh, aligned with the, with the killing field, uh, then uh, the following quantity so if we define kappa by this uh, so kappa is the surface gravity Uh, and uh, if kappa is, so kappa turns out to be a constant along, uh, so a constant scalar on the horizon. And if kappa is non-zero, then what you find is that uh, the, the, null, uh, geode the null generators, uh, if they're complete, uh, go to some surface where the, this null killing field uh, vanishes. So there is a bifurcation surface. And uh, in, in the, in the space-time uh, diagram, this is here. This is the bifurcation surface. So, this, uh, so you will have this picture whenever the surface gravity is, is, is non-zero. Uh, and in, in Schwarzschild, what happened is that the d by dt vector field uh, is zero there. It, it vanishes there. In, uh, in Kerr, this combination vanishes. So the d by dt vector field is actually tangent to this uh, bifurcation surface. Because the, the phi uh, is, is, well, so the phi is tangent, and therefore also the, the d by dt is tangent to that uh, surface. Uh, <coughs> okay, uh, so a, a very important fact, so, so one of the enemies, so to speak, uh, is that uh, there is an ergo region uh, and uh, so if we calculate uh, the, the dt squared term this is simply uh, uh, this is minus r squared minus 2 2 m r plus a squared cosine squared theta uh, over sigma 
uh, so we can ignore sigma because that's that's never zero. Uh, but this expression will uh, will change sign, and it will uh, it will change sign at a location r equals m plus minus square root of m squared minus a squared cosine squared theta. So this is a surface. That, so if we have cosine square cosine theta equal to one. Uh, then this is just uh, equal to r plus, or well, so if we uh, take the plus sign here, uh, then this will be equal to r plus at uh, at theta equal to zero or or pi, but at uh, uh, at at other Angular at other values of this angular parameter, this this will move out from the black hole. So uh, so what you have is that uh, so if we look at at the, the the black hole from the side, so this is the the z direction. It's orbit it's rotating like that, uh, and here's the here's this is theta equal to zero. Uh, then the surface. Uh, where uh, where this expression changes sign is is going to look something like that. So it touches the horizon at the poles and it it, it extends away from the horizon uh, near uh, near the equator, and this is called the ergo region. And and so here we have that dt is actually space like. And outside, uh, outside, of course, the t is is going to be timelike, and, it, and the norm of the t goes to minus one as we go out to infinity. On the other hand, uh, this this null generator of the horizon, uh, and there is a neighborhood outside the horizon where that vector field is timelike. So this is uh, so this is a, a vector field. That uh, that has uh, good property from the point of view of energy estimates, uh, whereas uh, the d by dt uh, near the horizon in Kerr uh, will have bad properties as far as energy estimates are, are concerned. <coughs> okay, uh, and. Uh, well, okay. So I, I think I, I should I should mention this, even though it's not not important from from our point of view. But uh, so there's been so much work associated with this fact that I think I have to mention it. And uh, so this is, this is uh, if we look at the area of the horizon, so it's a simple calculation. And what you find is that this area is 4 pi uh, r plus squared plus a squared. And uh, Um, if you if you calculate in 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 Schwarzschild, this becomes 16 pi m squared. Okay, uh, and you, what you find is that uh, is that the area of the horizon is in in Kerr is less than that, and it's equal to. O you have equality here only if a is equal to zero. And uh, now a very important uh, scenario, so to speak, is the following. So here we have this, here we have the horizon, and, and Hawking's area theorem says that says that the area of uh, 
So here is some some surfaces S, and and the area theorem says that A of S increases to the future. So these are cross sections of the event horizon, and and the area theorem says that the area of those increases to the future as we move up along the, the event horizon. Uh, on the other hand, here is here is scry. Down here is is uh, uh, space like infinity, and here we have the the ADM mass. Along here, if I calculate the the corresponding quantity for for a surface crossing out through scry, here is the the Bondi mass, and uh, the the derivative of that along the retarded time is negative. Uh, so, so the mass decreases as you go up. The area of the horizon increases. And the idea is that uh, here, those two should agree. And uh, so, and, and then uh, because of uh, these relations, what you find is that, uh, and also, uh, asymptotically, you expect to have Kerr, right? So, so near future time like infinity, uh, we should see something like Kerr. So this is a, you know, just heuristic ideas piled on top of each other. But what this leads to is, is that the area of the horizon over 16 pi to the 1 half is bounded bounds the, the ADM mass from below. And this is the Penrose inequality. So r very roughly stated. So it's, it, in this form, it doesn't, it, it doesn't really make sense. But this is the, this is the idea. What, what this expression should be replaced by is the minimizing hull of any marginally trapped surface. Uh, and uh, and then there is a hope that this is true, but this is actually proven in the Riemannian case uh, by Husken and Ilmanen. But the big open problem in this context is to prove such an inequality uh, in uh, in uh, in 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 a general space-time picture. Uh, and this is somehow uh, the rigidity aspect of this if you formulate it in terms of the Bondi mass, is also something that I, I think is extremely important to understand uh, in terms of the, the black hole stability problem. Because that would be one, uh, that's one way of, of understanding how the space-time approaches a curved black hole as you move to the future. Okay? Because then you're approaching the rigid situation in some appropriate version of the Penrose inequality, which takes into account angular momentum. Okay, so th this, th so there, 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 there are many, many heuristic ideas uh, floating around in this in this direction. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. So I have. Uh, okay. So I have actually 15 minutes. I think. So. Um, I, I can say a few more things in this. Uh, there are just any any uh, any cross section so that the induced metric is space like. Uh, so the, the the induced metric on the on the horizon is degenerate because it has null directions. But uh, a cross-section would be any surface that, that, uh, that such that the induced metric on the, on the, on the surface is, 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 is Riemannian. So it's a Riemannian two-surface. Sorry? The area just on which you choose. Yeah, I, I, yes, exactly. And, and, um, and, so, and the idea is that if you, if you push these up, along the, the null generator, for example, 
or or if you if you move up to the causal future, this area will increase. And this is uh, in if you're in 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 Kerr, for example, then then uh, or in Schwarzschild, then the area is going to be basically independent of of the choice of cross section. Uh, but in a dynamical black hole, this will this will this will increase. Then. And um, and so that's that's a quite a diff, quite a technical thing to prove uh, completely, but uh, but that has been done. As, uh, so this is work of uh, uh, crucial and delay and Galloway and 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 Howard. <coughs> okay, so so now I want to talk about. Uh, so I, I mentioned the the photon sphere. In uh, in Schwarzschild, and I want to talk about the corresponding object in the Kerr space-time. So, as I mentioned, we have the four uh, four conserved quantities, uh, and I mean I, I didn't write it. Uh, well, I, I wrote one version. Uh, which is uh, which is so we have so we have m which is g a b gamma dot gamma dot b we have uh, the e we have the l z and we have the k b uh, gamma dot a gamma dot b which let's denote this by q like that so even though this is not the the exact form that I wrote down. Uh, and now what you find is by by Liouville uh, that and of course some some calculation you can write uh, the geodesic system in this form. Okay, so so I'm not going to write these uh, all these expressions in detail. Uh, what what we're really interested in is the behavior of the radial null geodesics. But uh, I just want to point out that uh, that uh, the boyer linquist coordinates is not sep it's not a separable coordinate system. So we have the four constants of motion. But uh, you see here that the, these equations are not separable, separated in the sense that here we have only coordinate R dependence, here we have only theta dependence, but here it's mixed. Uh, and, uh, uh, but this, this, is, this is not, uh, not a problem. Uh, so we can, we can still analyze this. Uh, and uh, what you find is that uh, you have uh, equatorial null geodesics uh, rotating. Uh, I, I should say, uh, I should say one more thing. So we, we see here immediately from this that rotating. Null geodesics. This this is of course signaled by r dot equal to zero. Right. Uh, so f to have that property, what we have to have is that r is equal to zero, and 
also dr of, of script r is equal to zero. So, so r is a function of these conserved quantities and uh, depending on the value of these conserved quantities, uh, if we're at the, at the location where there can be a rotating null geodesic, both the value of r and its derivative has to be zero. And as you saw, uh, so, so this, this r here is actually, you know, if we go back to Schwarzschild, I wrote down the expression for the cor corresponding r. There we had r to the fourth power, which is ex equal to sigma squared in Schwarzschild, equal to some expression. And that expression involved essentially the, 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 potential, the, the potential v that I wrote down and, and the le energy level e. And so the, the energy level has to be balanced with the, the potential energy. Uh, and, and so that's, that's this expression. This is simply the, the fact that the potential has to be stationary, has to have a critical point at the location of, of uh, a fixed point for that, uh, that, uh, that Hamiltonian system, okay? <coughs> and and uh, so now the, the picture is like this. So uh, I will write down this, uh, this expression R in a moment, but what you, can, what you find is that um, uh, you, can, you can define, uh, let's say, uh, another, so the, so, so the location of, Uh, uh, on, let's say, E, which is LZ over E, and phi, which is um, uh, no, sorry, ah, what am I saying? So, uh, so it it doesn't it doesn't have a de an explicit dependence on E. It has it depends on E only via these dimensionless variables. Okay, so these are the real parameters that we need to look at, and uh, uh, and uh, so the, and the picture that emerges is the following. So there there are two uh, extreme values. So here is here is the here is the black hole, uh, and here is the radial direction. Uh, Here is 3m, uh, here is r2, so this is not to scale, and this is 4m, uh, and r1 is equal to 2m, let me just write this down. Uh, Okay, so uh, uh, so you can just calculate that these uh, these are aligned like this. So R1 is between the location of the horizon and 3m. R2 is between 3m and 4m. And uh, as I let a go to, so if we let a goes goes up to m. So this is when it goes when you go to extreme curve. Then, uh, then actually the coordinate location of these innermost um, null geodesics. Uh, so in, in between here, we have, uh, in between here we have, in this, in this range, we have equatorial uh, rotating 
I'll do this. And uh, at the extreme values, we have there you have only, sorry, uh, it should be out, out to here. So in this, in this range, we have equatorial null geodesics. And uh, at these extreme radial values, the only rotating null geodesics that you find there are in the equator. Uh, but in between here, uh, the, the, they undergo an, an, a dynamics in the theta direction that's governed by this equation here. And, uh, and, and uh, so if we look at the, the black hole from the side, you get the following picture. So here is the, uh, and, and here is the equatorial plane. Uh, then, so here is R1, R2, in here is, is 3M. And uh, now if I, so this is just in some, some Cartesian version of, of, uh, of the Borel-Linquist coordinates. Now there is a, 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 another value or, or over there. And uh, if, we, if I draw the, the, the region that's filled out, so if I now draw the coordinate sphere uh, at radius 3 R3, then what you find is that the region that's filled out by, uh, by orbiting null geodesics, uh, well, so this continues on the other side, of course, but um, uh, sorry, the, so the, the region that's filled out by the orbiting null geodesics has this shape, okay? And, it, uh, and those, uh, those geodesics that can actually oscillate, so if we, if we look at the constant R value, then uh, uh, you have, so, so here is some constant R value. We look at the orbiting null geodesic at at that R value, this is going to oscillate <coughs> on this uh, on the strip <coughs> on a strip of a of a certain width uh, theta width uh, that depends on the the, the these parameters. Um, so this is uh, this is an R constant, and uh, and so the height of the strip uh, reaches pi halves, so the, the, the total, the, well, the, the total height of the, height of the strip in the theta direction, um, uh, and here we would have, sorry, so here, here we would have theta uh, pi halves, and so on. Uh, the, the height of the, that strip reaches pi only for those which are located at a particular uh, R value slightly less than, than 3M, and those have angular momentum zero. Okay. So this is somehow, uh, uh, and, and uh, so I should also say that the guys here are co-rotating, these are counter-rotating. And this is an effect of the frame dragging in the curve space time uh, that's caused by the, the rotation of the, of the black hole. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, so I, should, I said here that uh, as, it, as I let modulus of A go to M, so a, the curve black hole goes to the extreme curve, this goes down to M, which is then this is the location, uh, well, it goes down to R plus. So, so this region sort of, at least in a coordinate sense, approaches the horizon. This is not, uh, I think, true in the, in the geometric sense because the horizon, as you go to extreme curve, gets pushed off at, uh, the, the bifurcation sphere gets pushed off to an infinite distance. And these slices that we're looking at are in the Borel-Linquist coordinates, so, so they, they hit 
the bifurcation sphere. And this one, uh, and at the same time, this, this goes up to, four, to 4m. So, so this, this strip, as you, go to, as you go to Schwarzschild, this shrinks down to, to a, a sphere. Uh, but in Kerr, it opens up and fills up a whole space-time region. Okay, so so I think uh, so I think I'll stop there and um, and uh, then start talking about the wave equation uh, tomorrow. Thanks.